Welcome. Please like and or subscribe. We'll appreciate your support. My name is Donald. For additional information, visit my website, d-o-n-a-l-d-s-s-i-t-e-l-i-o dot this is going to be a crash course on how to weave on a rigid heddle loom. We take about three parts. I'm trying to keep them all under 15 minutes. Learn on a Donald rigid heddle loom. Part one. Good morning. My name is Donald. I'm here to talk to you about uh, some of the weaving that I do. This here is my Necleric, Lecleric, uh, Nihilus uh, 36 inch floor loom. I picked this up real cheap on uh, Craigslist, but it's, uh, it's a very nice loom. I'm working on some uh, placemats right now on it. This is the uh, rigid heddle loom that I build and uh, try to sell. I've got a very unique pull system here. I like to use the apron strings and uh, a flat surface from beam to beam. So it works, it works out very well. It's also designed for two heddles uh, to start off with, so you don't have to add anything later if you uh, decide to do that. But anyway, uh, let's get started. This is the rigid heddle loom I, I make, Donald. It is not made on a CNC machine or anything. It is handmade by me. <laughs> this I'm showing you here to begin with. Let's tie the uh, reed, uh, to secure it so that it's going to stay put, not be flopping around. You can tie it anyway to get it secure. Next, we take the uh, yarn that we're going to be warping with, tie it to the rod there on the uh, fabric end or the... Uh, no, that's the warp back of the loom. And be sure that your apron strings go over the beam. If you want to, I like to leave a little bit of a loop there so that when we're taking it off, uh, it's easy to cut off and get off of there. That's a ball, roller, whatever. Do something with it, you know, let it roll around on the floor or in a bucket. I like to tie it, uh, roll it onto a paper towel core. I've got another video that shows you how I do that. Now using the heddle hook through the heddle and grab your yarn. <clears throat> Don't know how to explain this one, but this is my warping uh, uh, peg that I'm putting down at the end of the table. This is mine. It doesn't clamp down tight onto a table, but it does stay and it works very well for me. We've taken that, I went back and got that yarn that I pulled through the reed, take it down, wrap it around the warping peg, bring it back, and we're up under, over under the, uh, well, you're over the top, so reach under the rod, the thread, Reach through the reed again with your heddle hook and pull it through. Take it again down and put it around your warping peg. Back. Again, your thread is now under. So come over. Reach through the reed with your supplied. Um, run your warp back down around your warping peg. We're going to continue this and continue this. Go under, reach through, grab your thread. Uh, 
and extend it down through the, to your heddle peg or your warping peg again. We're going to do this over and over. Uh, start your first thread should be figure out how we uh, I did it. I started five uh, slots in from the end. It's going to make it about uh, 14 inch, maybe a little over 14 inch wide uh, runner. Okay, here I'm showing you from the from the front how you're going to do with your heddle hook. Grab that thread, pull it through, run it down, and put it on the warping peg. Bring it back. And as you take it down, you can see it unwinds, in my case, from my uh, paper towel core. Okay, we're back on the back side. Running that back, continuing the reed over the warping peg. It's coming back. Now, we're, what we're doing, we're as we complete this, you're going to have two threads for every slot in the reed. Don't worry about your holes. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Right now, we're running. Okay, so I just pulling through. It's running a double thread through that slot. Okay, we're going to go to the next video. You just keep continuing that, and continuing it until you're as wide as you're going to go. Here, I'm almost finished. I'm using here a variegated yarn. It's just from Walmart. Uh, it's multicolored, so as you get further and further into the uh, what I, what do they call it? Uh, Oh, I lost the word on it. Uh, skein. The skein of yarn. As I get into it, it, it changes. So that's where I'm getting my stripes from. Okay, I think uh, I was tying it off. I'm getting ready to tie it off. This is my last one. I've got, again, five slots left. So that's what I want. I'm going to cut the uh, thread now. Give myself a little bit of length. I'm going to tie it to a warping rod. Again, I don't want it tied tight because I want to be able to get, when we're finished with this, I want to be able to get that rod out of it. And use whatever kind of knot you want to tie to just secure the the thing, the string here. And we're going to be tensioning all of these uh, strings. And as you do this, try to keep your tension as even as possible. But we will evening out all of our tensions. If you do have a loose one in there, something, <coughs> don't worry about it just yet. Um, I'm going to show you how. But I don't have anybody that helps me. It's really nice when you're doing this tensioning if you've got some as you'll see here very shortly but uh, that's what I do okay okay here we've got uh, all the threads there I'm showing the full length here what I've got here is about uh, three six I think I'm about seven feet or two and a quarter yards long. But that's the length on where you're going to put your warping peg, how long a table, how close you're going to be to that table, or are you going to set two tables up so you can do a real long one? Uh, this is something you've got to decide as you do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting ready to take the warp off of that peg. And right here I'm using a, a notebook ring. You can get these uh, from the office, Walmart, wherever. Uh, I like to use these because it does not tie them tight. You can use just a thread and 
tie around there, get all your threads, and now remove your warping peg. You're not that any longer. It's, it's served its purpose. This is my, my tensioner. This is a sandbag, bean bag I've made. I think this was made of just uh, t-shirt material I sewed up and I filled it with uh, pinto beans. If I'm, It could be filled with rice. I've got some with rice, some with pinto beans. Uh, that's a, I think that's one's, and I think it's a full bag of pinto beans. There's a, it's a pretty heavy bag. And, I, and I've got six or eight, ten of those that I use. Time to time, I sometimes I, I like weaving on my forelume. Uh, it seems to work real well barefoot and down and when you're not pushing a pedal to put your feet on. They're very comfortable. Remember to subscribe to my site. And this is the end of uh, this, sec this part. And to join me on three.